the Acts of Paul and Thecla. As Paul went up from Iconium after his flight from Antioch, his fellow travelers were Demas and Hermogenes, a bronze worker. They were full of hypocrisy and flattered Paul as if they loved him. But Paul, gazing only at Christ's kindness, did no evil toward them, but loved them so much that he made all of the words of the Lord, the teachings and explanations of the good news, the birth and resurrection of the beloved sweet for them. He described to them, word for word, the great things of Christ and how they had been revealed to him. And a man named Onephorus, hearing Paul had come to Iconium, went out to his children, Simeus and Zeno, and his wife Lectra, to meet Paul so that he might welcome him. Titus had described Paul's appearance to him, for he had not seen him in the flesh, but only in spirit. And he went down the royal road to Lystra and stood waiting for him, looking at those walking by, according to Titus's description. And he saw Paul coming, a man small in stature, with a bald head and crooked legs, healthy, with knitted eyebrows, a slightly long nose, and full of kindness. For at times he appeared as a human being, and at others he had a face of an angel. And when Paul saw Onesiphorus, he smiled, and Onesiphorus said, Welcome, servant of the blessed God. And Paul replied, Grace to you and your household. But Demes and Hermogenes were jealous and went further into their hypocrisy, so that Demas said, Are we not of the blessed too, that you all have not welcomed us just as him? And Onesiphorus said, I do not see you the fruits of justice, but if you are anything, come to my house and well as well and rest. And when Paul entered into Onesiphorus' house, there was great joy and kneeling and breaking of bread and the word of God concerning self-control and resurrection. As Paul said, Blessed are the clear of heart, for they will see God. Blessed are those who observe purity in flesh, for they will become a temple of God. Blessed are the self-possessed, for God will speak to them. Blessed are those who set themselves apart from this world, for they will please God. Blessed are those who will have wives as if they do not, for they will be heirs of God. Blessed are those in awe of God, for they will become messengers of God. Blessed are the ones who tremble at God's words, for they will be called. Blessed are the ones who receive the wisdom of Jesus Christ, for they will be called children of the highest. Blessed are the ones who keep their baptism, for they will rest with the Father and the Son. Blessed are those on the journey to uniting with Jesus Christ, for they will be filled with in the light. Blessed are the ones who have departed the form of the world through God's love, for they will judge angels, and at the right hand of the Father they will be praised. Blessed are the compassionate, for they will receive compassion and will not see the day of grievous judgment. Blessed are the bodies of maidens, for they will have favor with God and will not lose the reward for their holiness. For the Father's word will be a work of salvation for them until the day of his child, and they will have rest forever. And Paul said these things in the middle of the association in Onesiphorus' house. A certain maiden, Thecla, whose mother was Theoclea and was promised in marriage to a man, Samiris, sat at a window close to the house and listened night and day to the message about holiness spoken by Paul. She did not turn away from the window, but moved forward in faith, rejoicing exceedingly. And yet, having seen many women and maidens coming to Paul, she also desired for herself to be deemed worthy, to stand face to face with Paul and hear the word of Christ. For she had not yet seen Paul in person, but only heard his word. And since she did not move away from the window, her mother sent for Samiris, and he came joyfully as if having already received her in marriage. So Samiris said to Theoclea, Where is my Thecla? And Theoclea said, I have a strange story to tell you. Indeed, for three days and nights Thecla has not risen from the window, either to eat or drink, but gazes as if looking upon some enjoyable sight. In this way she clings to a strange man who teaches deceptive and cunning words. 
so that I wonder how a maiden of such respect can be so painfully troubled. Thimiris, this person is threatening the city of Iconians, and your Thecla as well, for all the women and youth go to him and are taught by him. He says that it is necessary to fear God alone and live purely, and my daughter, like a spider in the window, also is bound to his words, held away by new desire and fear, fearful emotions. For the maiden fixates on the things he says and is captivated, but go to her and speak to her, for she is betrothed to you. And Thamiris went to her at once, loving her and also fearing her passion. He said, Thecla, my betrothed, why do you sit like this? What is the emotion that binds you in passion? Turn towards your Thamiris and be ashamed. And her mother also said the same things to her. Child, why do you look down and sit like this, answering nothing but acting like a mad person? And they cry desperately, Thamiris for loss of his wife, Theoclea for the loss of her child, and the maidservants for the loss of their mistress. So there was great confusion and mourning in the house. And while these things were happening, Thecla did not turn back, but was fixed to the word of Paul. And Thamiris leaped up and went out into the street and closely watched those going into Paul and those coming out. And he saw two men quarreling with each other and said to them, Men, who are you? Tell me. And who is this one who is inside with you, misleading the lives of young men and deceiving young women that they should not marry, but remain so as they are? I promise to give you both much money if you will tell me about him, for I am most important man of the city. And Demas and Hermogenes said to him, Who this one is, we do not know, but he deprives young men of wives and young women of husbands, saying, There is no resurrection for you unless you remain holy and do not sully the flesh, but keep it holy. And Thamir said to them, Come men, into my house and rest with me. And they departed for an extravagant banquet with much wine and great wealth and a magnificent table. And Thamiris gave them drink because he loved Thecla and wanted to have her for his wife. And at the banquet, Thamiris said, Men, tell me what his teaching is so that I may know it. For I have more than a little anguish about Thecla because she loves the stranger and I am deprived of my own marriage. And Demis and Hermogenes said, Bring him to the governor, Castilius, on the charge of seducing the the masses, so the new teaching, in charge of, s bring him to the governor Castilius on the charge of seducing the masses to the new teaching of the Christians. Then he will kill him, and you will have your wife Thecla, and he will teach you that the resurrections which he says is coming has already taken place in the children which we have, and that we have risen when we learned to know the true God. But when Tamiris heard these things from them, he was filled with jealousy and wrath. Rising early in the morning, he went to the house of Onesiphorus with the rulers, public officials, and a large crowd with clubs, saying to Paul, You have corrupted the city of the Iconians, and also my betrothed, so that she will not want me. Let us go to the governor Castilius. And the whole crowd said, Arrest the magician, for he has corrupted all of our wives and has seduced the masses and Thamiris stood before the court crying out loudly and saying proconsul this person we do not know where he is from who does not allow maidens to marry let him say to you on what account he, he teaches these things but Demis and Hermogenes said to Thamiris Say, he is a Christian, and then you will die. destroy him. And the governor held to his purpose, and he called Paul, saying to him, Who are you, and what do you teach? For it is no small thing they have accused you of. And Paul lifted up his voice, saying, If I today am interrogated for what I teach, then listen, proconsul. The living God, the God of retribution, the jealous God, the self-sufficient God, desiring the salvation of humanity, has sent me so that I might reclaim them from corruption and impurity, all pleasure and death, and they might no longer sin. For this reason God sent his very own child, whom I bring good news and teach about. 
in that one in that one humans have hope who alone had compassion for a wandering world so that humanity might no longer be under judgment but have trust and fear of God and knowledge of dignity and a love of truth if then I teach the things revealed to me by God what wrong have I done proconsul but the government but the governor hearing these things ordered Paul to be bound and he was carried off to prison until the governor might have the leisure for a more careful hearing of him but in the night Thecla took off her bracelets and gave them to the gatekeeper and the door was open for her she went into the prison and gave the jailer a silver mirror she went into Paul and sat at his feet and she heard the great things of God and Paul feared nothing having rights in the freedom of God and Thecla strengthened her trust kissing his chain but when Thecla was sought out by her own people and Thamiris they pursued her through the streets as one who is lost and one of the fellow slaves of the gatekeeper disclosed that she had left in the night and they questioned the gatekeeper and he said to them she has gone to the stranger in the prison and they went as he told them and found her bound in affection they went out from that place and drew together a crowd and they declared to the governor what had happened and Paul was ordered to be brought to the court. Thecla wallowed in the place where Paul taught as he sat in the prison, but the governor ordered that she also be brought to the court, and she went off exulting with joy. When Paul had been brought, the crowd cried out even louder, He is a magician, take him away. But the governor heard Paul contently as he spoke about the divine works of Christ. And when the governor had considered the counsel he was given, he called Thecla, saying, Why do you not marry Samiris, according to the law of the Iconians? But she stood looking intently at Paul, and when she did not answer, Theoclea, her mother, cried out, saying, Burn the lawless one! Burn the one who refuses to be a bride in the middle of the theater, so that all the women taught by this man will be afraid. And the governor was greatly moved, and had Paul whipped and thrown out of the city, but Thecla he condemned to be burned. And immediately the governor rose and went off to the theater, and the whole crowd went to the violent spectacle. But Thecla, like a lamb in the wilderness, looking around for the shepherd, sought for Paul. And when she looked into the face of the crowd, she saw the Lord sitting there in Paul's form and said, As if I were not able to endure, Paul has come to see me, and she looked intently at him, but he departed into heaven. And the young men and young women brought firewood and straw so that Thecla might be burned. And as she came naked, the governor wept and revealed at the power in her. And the executioners laid out the firewood and ordered her to climb upon the pyre. And when she made the sign of the cross, she climbed upon the firewood. They lit it, and a great fire blazed. But the fire did not touch her, for God, having compassion, caused a sound under the earth, and a cloud, filled with rain and hail, darkened the sky from above, and the vessel poured forth all that was in it. Many were in danger and died, and the fire was extinguished, and Thecla was saved. And Paul was fasting with Onesiphorus and his wife and children in an open tomb as they went on the road from Iconium to Daphne. And when many days had passed, as they were fasting, the children said to Paul, We are hungry. And they had nothing with which to buy bread, for Onesiphorus had left behind the things of the world and followed Paul with his entire household. And Paul took off his robe and said, Go! child and buy more bread and bring it back but when the child was buying bread he saw his neighbor Thecla and was astounded and he said Thecla where are you going and she said I am looking for Paul I was saved from the fire and the child said come I will lead you to him for he is mourning for you and has been praying and fasting for six days already and when she was brought to the tomb Paul was kneeling and prayed saying, Father of Christ, do not let the fire touch Thecla. 
but stand by her because she is yours. And she rose behind him and cried out, Father, who made heaven and earth, Father of your beloved child, Jesus Christ, I praise you because you quickly granted what I asked for, and you heard me. And there was much love in the tomb, Paul rejoicing, and Osiphorus, and all of them. And they had five loaves and vegetables and water and salt, and rejoiced in the divine words of Christ. And Thecla said to Paul, I will cut my hair short and follow you wherever you go. But he said, It is a shameful time, and you are fair. May no other trial come upon you worse than the first, and this time you are not able to stand firm, but are cowardly. And Thecla said, Only give me the seal of Christ, and no trial will touch me. And Paul said to Thecla, Have patience, and you will receive the water. And Paul sent Onesiphorus and his entire household away to Iconium, and taking Thecla, went to Antioch. But immediately as they entered, the president of the provincial council of Syria, a certain man named Alexander, saw Thecla and became enamored with her and tried to persuade Paul with money and gifts. But Paul said, I do not know the woman of whom you speak, nor is she mine. But Alexander, having a lot of power, embraced her on the street. And she would not endure it, but sought after Paul and cried out bitterly, saying, Do not violate the stranger. Do not violate the slave of God. I am important among the Iconians, and because I did not wish to marry Samiris, I have been thrown out of the city. And taking hold of Alexander, she tore off his cloak and took the crown from his head and caused him public shame. But he at once, loving her and also being dishonored by what had happened to him, brought her before the governor, and when she confessed the things she had done, he sentenced her to the wild beasts. And the women were panic-stricken and cried out before the court, Evil judgment! Unholy judgment! But Thecla asked the governor that she might remain pure until she was forced to fight the wild animals. And a rich queen named Tryphania, whose daughter had died, took Thecla into her care and found solace in her. When the wild animals were led in procession, they bound her to a ferocious lioness, and the queen Tryph Tryphania followed her. But the lioness sat down in front of Thecla and licked her feet, and the entire crowd was astounded. And the charge on her inscription was a sacrilege. And the women, along with the children, cried out from above, saying, God, a godless judgment has been passed in this city. And after the procession, Tryphenia received her again, for her daughter, Falconia who was dead, said to her mother in a dream, You will have the lonely stranger, Thecla, in place of me, so that she might pray for me, and I might be transformed to the place of the just. When Tryphenia received her back from the procession, she at once mourned, because Thecla was going to fight with the wild animals the next day, but also loved her vehemently, like her own daughter, Falconalia, saying, Thecla, my second child, come here and pray for my child so that she might live forever, for I saw this in a dream. And without hesitation, she lifted her voice and said, May God, the child of the highest, the one in heaven, give her according to her wish so that her daughter, Falconalia, might live forever. After Thecla, Thecla said these things, Tryphenia mourned, that such beauty was to be thrown to the wild animals. And when dawn arrived, Alexander came to take her away, for he was the one who offered the games, saying, The governor is seated, and the crowd is clamoring for us. Take away she who is to fight the wild animals. But Tryphenia cried out, so that he fled, saying, A second morning for my Falconalia has come upon my house, and there is no one to help, neither my child, for she is dead, nor relatives, for I am a widow. God of my child, Thecla, help Thecla. And the governor sent soldiers to bring Thecla. But Tryphenia would not stand away from her, but taking her by her hand, led her, saying, I brought my daughter Falconalia to the grave, and you, Thecla, I bring to fight the wild animals. And Thecla cried ferociously and wailed to the Lord, saying, Lord God, in whom I trust, with whom I have taken refuge, who rescued me from the fire, render reward to Trithinia, who showed compassion for your slave and guarded my holiness. Then there was an uproar and rumbling of wild animals, and a cry from the people, and the women sitting together, 
some saying, bring in the sacrilegious one, but others saying, let the city be destroyed for this lawlessness, destroy all of us, proconsul, ferocious spectacle, evil judgment. And Thecla was taken out of Trifinius' hands and stripped and received a girdle and was thrown into the stadium and lions and bears were thrown in front of her and a ferocious lioness charged her and then lay down at her feet. And a bear ran up to her, but the lioness charged and met it and tore the bear apart. And again, a lion that had been trained against humans, which belonged to Alexander, ran up to her, and the lioness engaged the lion, and the two were killed together. And the women mourned even more since the lioness that helped her was dead. And they threw in many wild animals as she stood and stretched out her hands and prayed. But as she finished the prayer, she turned and saw a great pit full of water and said, Now it is time for me to wash. And she threw herself in, saying, In the name of Jesus Christ, I baptize myself on the last day. And seeing this, the women and the whole crowd wept, saying, Do not throw yourself into the water, so that even the governor wept, because the sea lions were going to devour such beauty. Then she threw herself into the water, in the name of Jesus Christ, but the sea lions seeing the light of a lightning flash, floated on the surface, dead, and surrounding her was a cloud of fire, so that neither the wild animals could touch her, nor could she be seen naked. And the women, when other, more frightening wild animals were being thrown in, cried aloud, and some threw petals, while others nard, and others cin cinnamon, and yet others cardamom, so that there was an abundance of perfume. And all the wild animals which were let out were held as if by sleep and did not touch her. So Alexander said to the governor, I have exceedingly terrorized, terrorizing bulls. Let us bind them to the one who is to fight the wild animals. And looking sad, the governor turned to him saying, Do what you will. And they bound her by their feet between the bulls and placed burning irons under their genitals in order to agitate them further so they might kill her. Then they leaped up, but a consuming flame burned through the ropes, and Thecla was as if she had not been bound. And Tryphania fainted as she stood by the arena on the stage. And female slaves said, Queen Tryphania is dead. And the governor froze, and the whole city was frightened. And Alexander fell down on the governor's feet and said, Have mercy on both me and the city, and acquit the animal fighter in case the city be destroyed with her. For if Caesar should hear these things, he will quickly destroy us, together with the city, because the Queen Tryphinia, a relative of his, died beside the stage. And the governor called out to Thecla from the midst of the wild animals and said to her, Who are you, and what is it about you? Not even one of the wild animals touched you. And she said, I indeed am the slave of the living God. And as to what it is about me, I have trusted in the child of God in whom he finds pleasure and through whom not even one of the wild animals touched me. For this one alone is the limit of salvation and the foundation of life through the ages. For he is a refuge for those in storm freedom for the oppressed, for the despairing a shelter, and once and for all, whoever does not trust in him will not live, but die forever. And when he heard these things, the governor ordered garments be brought to her, and said, put on these garments, and she said, the one who clothed me when I was naked among the wild beasts is this one who will clothe me with salvation in the day of judgment. And having taken the garments, she put them on. And the governor immediately sent forth a decree saying, God-fearing Thecla, slave of God, I release you. And the women all cried out in a loud voice as if from one mouth and gave praise to God saying, One is God who has saved Thecla. And that the whole city shook from their voice. And Tryphinia, receiving the good news, came to meet her with a crowd and embraced Thecla and said, Now I have confidence that the dead are raised. Now I trust that my child lives. Come inside, and I will assign to you all the things that are mine. Then Thecla went in with her and rested in her house for eight days, instructing her in the word of God 
so that even most of the maidservants believed, and there were great joy in the house. But Thecla missed Paul and searched him out, looking around everywhere, and it was reported to her that he was in Mira, and taking young men and young women, she bound herself up and stitched together her garment, a robe in the fashion of a man's, and departed for Mira. And she found Paul speaking the word of God and waited near him. And he was astonished when he saw her and the crowd that was with her, wondering whether another trial was upon her. But observing this, she said to him, I have received a bath, Paul, for the one who worked together with you for the good news also worked together with me in my baptism. And Paul took her hand and led her to the house of Hermias. And he heard everything from her so that Paul greatly marveled. And those who heard were affirmed and prayed on behalf of Tryphenia. And as Thecla stood up, she said to Paul, I am going to Iconium. And Paul said, Go and teach the word of God. Then Tryphenia sent her many clothes and gold so that she could, have a po she could leave a portion behind for Paul to use in service for the poor. And she left for Iconium and went to Onesiphorus' house and fell on the floor where Paul had sat and taught the words of God. And she cried, saying, God of me and of this house, where the light shone on me, Christ Jesus, the child of God, my help in prison, my help before governors, my help in the fire, my help with the wild animals. You are God, and you are the glory forever. Amen. And she found that Samiris had died, and that her mother was alive. And she called her mother and said to her, Theoclea, mother, can you believe that the Lord lives in heaven? For if you desire money, the Lord will give it to you through me, or your child. Look, I am standing before you. And bearing witness to these things, she departed for Seleucia, enlightening many with the word of God. But certain ones in the city, Greeks by religion and doctors by profession, sent violent young men to her to ruin her. For they said, she's a maiden and serves Artemis. Because of this, she has power with healing. And by God's foresight, she entered into a rock, alive, and it descended under the earth. And she left for Rome to see Paul and found him sleeping. And after staying there a little while, she slept with a beautiful sleep. And she is buried about two or three stadia from the tomb of her teacher Paul. She was cast into the fire when she was 17 and to the wild animals when she was 18. It has been said that she was an aesthetic in a cave when she was 72. So all the years of her life were 90. And after accomplishing many healings, she rests in the place of the Holy One, having fallen asleep on the 24th of September. In Christ Jesus, our Lord, to whom be the glory and strength forever and ever. Amen. That's the Acts of Paul and Thecla. I read it out of a new New Testament, a Bible for the 21st century by Hal Tussig.